How you doing? Um, how are the rest of the Inhumans? Okay, all right. Um, do you listen to music? Besto Productions presents Creative Continuity at Baltimore Comic Con 2014. Get the latest news directly from comic book artists and writers. Tune in for Creative Continuity's coverage of Baltimore Comic Con. We bring the convention to you. Sure. Um, uh, um, all right. Uh, what did you eat today? Jesus? I'm here with Franco. How'd you get started? Um, I got started uh, in comics, just reading comics. Mm -hmm. um, I would go to work with my dad all the time, and uh, we had a restaurant, and, and he would always uh, give me some money in the afternoon and say, here's a couple bucks, go go buy something for yourself, because uh, I would sit there and work all day, and I'd always wind up buying comics. Mm -hmm. Got into comics, uh, I would sit around and draw them, copy them. Uh, I got to meet Jose Luis Garcia Lopez la a couple weeks ago, and I said to him, I said, you know, I, I learned how to draw someone's stuff by copying you. And he said, no, don't copy me. He goes, you learn all the bad stuff that way. And I'm like, no, no, your bad stuff is really good. You know, so uh, it was a big thrill for me. And, and uh, I just kept doing it, even uh, through high school and college, and, and uh, just kept drawing. What was the break that got you into it mainly? Um, I actually, you know, had my own comic book store for a very short time way back when. You know, I just started picking up drawing comics again just by having the store. And then um, I kept going from there because, you know, you get all types of people. Like when you come to a convention, you get all, all type, types of people that love comic books and love drawing. And that kind of got me back into it. And then uh, I started making my own comics and just went from there. Okay, what was the first comic that you made? The first comic I made myself was a book called Flesh and Blood. Uh, I like to call them Hoochie Mama book because, you know, it was a very well-endowed woman. And, and then I learned quickly that... that that really didn't work for me, you know, and, and I went I went more cartoony, you know. Right. Um, and, and, you know, I, I thought I did that book just because I thought everybody else wanted to see that book. Right. You know, um, I like telling the story, but, you know, um, cartooning kind of fit me uh, better. Okay. And, and I did a book called Weirdsville, and then uh, I met Art, and uh, we started doing uh, Patrick Wolfboy, and then Oh Yeah Comics, and it led to everything else. So what are you currently working on? Uh, we're doing our own line of books called Oh Yeah Comics. Uh, we just finished up Itty Bitty Hellboy. Mm -hmm. uh, we're currently working on Tiny Titans for DC Comics. Okay. And uh, next we're going to be doing Itty Bitty Mask for Dark Horse. Oh, wow. So the Jim Carrey movie where he was a mask. Right. Around, yeah, we're doing a comic version uh, of the character, not, not the Jim Carrey character. There's a new guy that's going to be wearing the mask. Uh, I have a, a new web comic actually, that's coming out in, in a couple of weeks. Um, it's going to be called Spot on Adventure, uh, and it's a unique... Uh, kind of web comic, so hopefully everybody will check it out. We don't want to give it away yet because uh, we're we're kind of fun putting the finishing touches on it right now. You did some artwork for the Green Lantern cartoon. Was that the animated cartoon, yeah, or we, was it just the comic did, book? Uh, we did the comic book for uh, the animated adventures for DC. Oh, okay. And uh, we did uh, cartoon work. I don't know if you ever saw DC Nation. We did the the Super Pets. Right. Uh, with uh, crypto and streaky right, and the right, right, and stuff right. like yeah. that. Yeah, yes, that was yes. us. Wow, mm -hmm. wow. So whatever happened to that series, if you don't mind me asking? I... Uh, they were just a bunch of shorts. Uh, they asked us to, to work on the shorts. They were originally going to do, they were thinking of doing a Tiny Titans cartoon. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, the, the way things work in Hollywood, I, I don't understand them. I don't even pretend to understand how it oh, works. Okay. But, uh, you know, they decided they wanted to do Teen Titans because everybody recognized that brand more. But then what they wound up doing was they, they wound up kind of, I guess, smashing Teen Titans and Tiny Titans together, and they came up with Teen Titans Go. You're right. And and a lot of a lot of humor from more of the TV show is, is taken from uh, the books. And from what I understand, people that have worked on the show are fans of the book, and they read the book, and, and, and some of the humor is translated over. All right, Creative Continuity. With Franco. Signing out. <laughs> yeah, also, all yeah, comics in Skokie, Illinois. That's our comic shop. Go there. Here we go. We interrupt our scheduled programming for this report from Harold Gann at RetroCon. So Larry Kenny, well, how'd you get the opportunity to get started in the, the voice acting? Well, uh, I started as a disc jockey in radio. Uh, I actually hear it in your voice. You got yeah. a good disc jockey voice. Thank you very much. Uh, when I was 15 years old. Wow. 52 years ago, and uh, 
and I had always been a class clown. You know, I always, I always did uh, ran around doing cartoon type voices and impressions of famous people. Mm -hmm. And uh, that that led naturally to I, I used those I used voices like that on my uh, on my radio shows at Disc Jockey, and then that led to, to doing commercials, and then eventually when I got to New York to doing shows like Thundercats and uh, and commercials like Count uh, Chocula and and Coco Puffs, which I've been doing for both of those for over 35 years now. Mm. That's how I got started. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So when when the opportunity to play like hey we're coming up with the show. Did you see the audition you come about it, or did they come to you with the show idea? No, my agent called me one day and said, uh, as, as is always the case, uh, you always, your agent will call you and say, um, for example, uh, on Wednesday at 2 o'clock, you go to a certain place, and you're auditioning for it, you know, either this commercial or this cartoon series or whatever. And you go, and uh, they, they tell you as much as they want to tell you about the product or about the character or the show. And then uh, they give you a little while to look over the scripts. And then when it's your turn to go in the studio, you give them your idea of what the character should sound like, based on what they told you or whatever ideas you have for the character. And uh, you go home, and um, after they've auditioned a couple hundred people and they've decided, then you either get the phone call saying you got it, or you just don't hear anything, and then you know you didn't get it. Oh, okay. So what was your reaction when you got that call? Like, hey, you're going to be playing Lino. Uh, yeah, well, of course, nobody knew who Lino was at the time. Right, it was right. A brand new series, but yeah, I was very excited. Uh, uh, mainly at, the, at that time, I was mostly excited because I used to watch Rankin Bass animated series when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, they made some of the most famous Christmas specials. So when I found out that I, I was going to be working for Rankin Bass, it was, it was quite an honor. I was very excited. Uh, Lionel. Now, actually, hearing you talk, it's your actual voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lionel is pretty much my pretty much my voice. Just a little more dramatic on screen. You right. Know? I mean, I might be standing here talking to you and saying, "Sort of omens come to my hand." I Lionel, but on screen, it's you know, "Sort of omens come to my hand." I Lionel, come oh. <laughs> All right, that was awesome. That's acting. That's acting. All right. But then, of course, we got to do the, the chance to do uh, some quote cartoon voices. As the bad guy, the mutants. I played Jackal Man. Oh wow! We must get the Thundercats. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you did Count Chocula. I have been for 35 years. You auditioned for that as well. Yes, but uh, in that event, for Count Chocula and for um, Sonny the Cocoa Puffs Bird, whom I've also been doing for 35 years. Right. I followed uh, uh, guys who had already been doing it for a number of years, and and in those both of those cases they wanted to recreate the sound that had already been there for a long time it wasn't okay. uh, my job to come up with a new voice oh, oh okay okay uh, a fellow named Jim Dukas had been doing uh, Count Chocula for 10 or 15 years <coughs> uh, until he retired in 1978 and then I, I won the audition to take over that voice and do it pretty much the way he had been doing it. You know, okay. Count Chocula is easy. Right, believe me. <laughs> it's just come directly, you know. But with Chocula. Chuck McCann had been mm -hmm. doing Cocoa Puffs for about 25 years. I remember when I was a little kid, Chuck McCann was Cocoa Puff, was um, Sonny the Cocoa Puff. So they wanted me to pretty much match his voice for that too, which I did. Okay. All right, you did. You played Bluegrass from uh, Silverhawk. On Silverhawk, that was Colonel Bluegrass, that's right with his guitar. We did 65 episodes of Silver Rocks. We did 130 episodes of Thundercats. I mean, out of those 130 episodes, which one was your favorite? Do you have a favorite uh, episode that you voiced? I think, I think where Lionel was still a little boy. Okay, and you played him as a little boy I as well? as a little boy, yeah. That was, uh, oh, that's okay. why it was fun, because it was my voice, but I had to sound like I was like five years old. You oh, know? okay. And so I, that was fun for me to do. All right. Okay. But they were all fun. All right, now, the Thundercats rebooted, and you played Lionel's father, correct? Well, that's, that's right. That was great because, uh, first of all, I thought it was a great homage to the original series. Uh, Warner Brothers was giving a nod toward, you know, the fans of the original series and to the cast and crew of, of the original series. Uh, and also because, um, well, it made a lot of sense because... Um, Lionel's voice was basically my voice 35 years ago, right. and Claudius's voice was pretty much my voice now. I'm a little, right. little gravelier than I was, 
So, um, and then of course for Quadras, I, I affected a little older sound, made him a little more, you know, like, well, you know, you've got to stop what you're doing and be a man. You saw the reboot, yeah. and you worked on the original. Which one did you like better? I like the original better, but I mean, that's natural. Uh, we did 130 episodes of that one, and I was only on two episodes of the new one. Right, right, right. Uh, but I thought they did a great job with the new one. The guys at Warner Brothers, Dan Norton and all the guys there. And I was very sad when it uh, when it got canceled. So we all worked together for a long time for Rankin Bass. Had a nice long run, five or six years uh, working together, you know, straight through. Harold Gann with Creative Continuity, signing off with Larry Kenny. Thunder. Uh-oh. Thunder. Uh-oh. Thunder. 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 Uh-oh. Thunder. Oh! Who are these people? <laughs> Tiger Shark. Yeah. We did that after Thundercats and after Silverhawk. That was where they were half man, half fish. Oh, okay. And I played Dolph, who was a... Dolphin? No, he was a Oh, okay. No, he was a dolphin. <laughs> Cradle Continuity here at the RetroCon with Peter Newman. Where? I think we covered everything. And besides, I have, everything. I have to pee. How did you get started? Uh, well, uh, we had breakfast this morning, and oh, you mean oh, you mean yeah, the yeah, voiceover? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. Can your bladder make it? Okay. And when you're talking to a microphone, you can't just you know gesture with your gesture with your hands like that. Pee your piper. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I need to go, but it's not like a dire emergency. Oh, okay. You sound just like him. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Yornal. Yornal. Oh! 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 Who? Oh. 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 All right, this is Harold Gant. You're Sign not flashing up. gang signs here, right? No, no, no. It's oh. the Red Lantern. All right. All right, go ahead. Straight of continuity. Sign off with Larry Kennedy. Oh. Harold Gant. Signing off with Larry Kennedy. That's a lot, Larry. Not Kennedy, it's Kenny. Kenny, I'm sorry. No, D. <laughs> you you confused me. Let's do one right now. All right, let's do one right. I'm sorry. The gang signs took uh, me away. I my pants already. All, All right. right, you guys out there have any questions? <laughs> Doesn't matter because I can't hear you. Woo! All right, this is Harold Gann with Larry Kenny. Signing off. Thunder. 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 Thundercat. 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 Ho! You guys gotta come to rehearsal. We all just got it. That's why we have rehearsal. Well. Call the Thundercats before. Shut up, you.